Hey everybody, today we're going to be talking about how is multiplayer Civ 3 different from single player. So there are a lot of differences between the two that have to do with the mods that we play for multiplayer, uh, but I'm not going to be talking about that today. I'm not going to be talking about the mods. Everything I'm talking about here is a fundamental difference between multiplayer Civ 3 and single player Civ 3. Like this is just the way that multiplayer Civ 3 is programmed. So here we are. General differences. There is no war weariness. Volcanoes don't erupt. And the way that cities get capturing getting captured works a little bit differently so in single player in some cases the city will be automatically raised and in some place, cases you'll have the choice to raise it or not to raise it to capture it uh, so the cases where it's automatically raised in case you don't remember are the city has to have less than 10 culture it has to have less than two citizens and it can't have any citizen of a foreign nationality so uh, in those cases the city is automatically raised in single player, if those things are not true, if any one of those things are not true, then you have the choice to raise or capture. In multiplayer, if you would have had the choice in single player, it is automatically captured. So in single or in multiplayer, the city is either automatically raised or it is automatically captured. And that's a pretty big difference. So uh, simultaneous moves. Multiplayer is played using simultaneous moves. It is a turn-based game where humans take uh, their turns simultaneously. So what that means is uh, you can like interfere with other players' strategies, you can like interact with them, and it's kind of fun because it turns what is normally a turn-based game into a turn-based game that has relevant, uh, sorry, that has elements of a real-time strategy game. Uh, next thing is stack moves. So uh, for those who don't know, if you press S, X, and then click on a particular tile, you will move all the units in the stack to that tile, and control X click moves all the units of the same type. This exists in single player. Uh, but in multiplayer, attacks using stack moves have special properties. So I'm going to tell you those properties. So if you initiate a stack attack, all units in both of those tiles are locked in place until the attack has resolved. So I'll show you guys this in play. Let's say we take a stack of warriors. We'll do move same type. Let's say we want to attack this stack right here with our warriors. Probably not a smart idea, but it's something that we could do. So if we initiated that attack, um, note that in single player, the animation takes quite a long time, unless you turn it off, in which case the combat will happen in instantaneously, like it'll happen like this. Yeah, like it just instantly got resolved. In multiplayer, that's not the case. The animation exists, but it's very, very sped up. Uh, so that means it does take some time, and during that time, special properties applied to the, the two tiles that are being attacked and that you're attacking from. So if I wanted to call off the attack, I would be unable to do so. Like, units on this tile are locked into the attack until all of those attacks are resolved. Same thing about units on the defending tile. If he wants to remove those units from the defending tile, he can't until all of my attacks have resolved. Uh, it's also kind of difficult, like, uh, if I wanted to attack with one of the, this unit, while the stack attack was playing out, I couldn't do that until after the stack attack had resolved. So, uh, that stack attacks just generally in open terrain. It works very slightly in uh, cities, and I'll show you how. So, uh, the one thing is, like, it's also difficult if I was to stack attack his stack. Uh, it's difficult for him to put a unit on that tile. He can't do that from any adjacent tile. Like, if he had a unit here, he couldn't put the unit here while it's being stack attacked until the attack has resolved. If he had a unit like that was more than one tile away though, he could. So if he had like a pikeman over here and he wanted to defend his stack, he could just move his pikeman over. It's just adjacent tiles where you, you're locked and you can't move them onto the defending stack. So I'll show you how it works with cities. No, that's, <laughs> that's not what we want. Oh, he just... <laughs> okay, so let's say he had a stack right here and he wanted to attack my city. So the way it works is the same thing, like the, the stack attack is locked in place, and until it resolves, uh, neither the units in the city or the units attacking the city can move. Uh, and it's difficult to put units into the city that I want to defend. Like if I, have a, if I have a unit right here and I try to move it over, it won't let me. The game will bar me from doing that uh, since it's an adjacent tile. But if it's more than one tile away, then you can safely put it in. Like, I could just do this, and then we get into the city. Uh, if I was adjacent to the city, and I wanted to move in uh, while it's under attack, there's a special thing you can do with cities, and that is the Control shift g command, that is go to city. So I just click on the city, 
and it will override the stack attack and let me get into the city, even though I wouldn't otherwise be able to put a defending unit in the city while he's attacking it. Great, so that solves that. Uh, yeah, all of this applies to attacks on cities, just that one thing is different, that you can do, do control shift g to override the, uh, the attack on the city and get your unit in. So, devil moves. Uh, you'll see in multiplayer, oh, I didn't load this in multiplayer, uh, but in multiplayer, it is played with a turn timer. The turn timer will show up in the top right corner. When that bar on the turn timer reaches the end, the turn is over for everybody. So that means whatever you had left to do, it doesn't matter. The turn is over and new turn starts. So what that means is if you move your units in right before the turn timer expires, uh, then your opponent has less time to react to that. And if you move your units again right after the new turn starts, from their perspective, it seems like you move twice in a row. And we call that a double move. That is a completely, completely legal tactic. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of the, the metagame strategy and military strategy is based around the, the double move, basically. So for this reason, it's polite not to conduct uh, diplomacy with your allies at the start or the end of the turn. Those are the two busiest times, so stick to the middle of the turn. Last thing, uh, the defensive bombard. So due to a bug, defensive bombard is exponentially more powerful in multiplayer than it is in single player. Normally this results in two rounds of combat going through and then an instant kill on the attacking unit. Uh, this becomes less powerful if the attacker's defense strength is high, uh, but it's still very strong. And so for that reason, archers are very good defensive units when you place them in stacks. So there are counterplay options against this. You can attack with disposable units first, uh, since defensive bombard only happens once per archer per turn. So once you've eaten up the defensive bombard for the turn, you can safely attack. You can use surprise attacks with double moves so that their archers or whatever defensive bombard units are not in place. Or you could force the enemy to split up their stack. So you could do that by starting to pillage their roads. And once they see you doing that, then they'll have to move their units to protect all their different tiles. And once their stack is split up, it's easier to isolate them and uh, kill the units once you get rid of the defensive bombard. So yeah, uh, I've got some examples of all these things. So uh, here's our example of both a double move and the defensive bombard. So here's France over here. He's going to move a swordsman right onto this tile at the end of turn. You see the turn timer right here? The green bar is almost full, so it's about to expire. So he does a double move here. The turn timer expires. The turn ends for everybody, including me and him. And so his swordsman can move again. So he uses that time to attack with his swordsman. So underneath my spearman is a single archer. And that was the defensive bombard right there. So I'll show you guys again, just in case you didn't catch it. So you'll see that two rounds of combat goes through. He deals one damage, I deal one damage, and then he just dies. That's defensive bombard happening, or the defensive bombard bug. And it results, in this case, in a near instant kill. So yeah, uh, I've got another example of defensive bombard. This is going to be an example of counterplay against the defensive bombard. So what's happening in this game is that the, the Mongols are over here, they're my ally, and we're doing a coordinated attack on Russia. So the Mongols are going to use the double move to ambush him uh, to surprise attack his city with a bunch of horsemen, and he wants me to distract. So I've decided to go for the units on this tile to keep him busy. So there's a spearman here and there's an archer underneath the spearman. The reason I'm not going for the cities is because I can't see what's in the cities. It could be a lot of archers. So uh, what that means is that I want to get rid of the defensive bombard first before I attack his spearman. So I've just got a disposable warrior I can use. I put that one in the city and with this one I attack the spearman. The warrior dies instantly defensive bombard, but now the defensive bombard is eaten up. So I can safely attack his stack without there being any defensive bombard. And I did what I needed to do, I distracted him, so I'm happy with the attack. So, what you'll notice about that trade, he lost one spearman and one archer. I lost one warrior and one archer. So in terms of shields, in ter uh, sh the shield cost of the units we lost, that was a very favorable trade for me. So despite the fact that he was using the defensive bombard in that case, I was able to take a favorable trade. So if you're smart about it, you can kind of play around the defensive bombard bug. This is another example of a double move. So this is a stack attack. This is a, a timing push I'm doing. I'm Russia, and I'm doing this against the Ottomans. So I keep my units here out of sight. 
and I move them in end of turn. It's kind of blocked, but the turn timer is about to expire. The turn timer expire. The turn ends for everybody. You'll notice how I actually activate my warrior first. That's because the, the unit I attack with first will be the first one to attack. And I want it to be the case that if he has any archers in Istanbul, I want the warrior to eat up the defensive bombard instead of the uh, any of my more powerful units like the swordsmen or the archers. So one interesting thing is that uh, the defending unit cannot promote if the attacking unit dies to defensive bombard. And it also won't trigger a golden age, like if I attacked a, a hoplite with an archer underneath and my warrior dies to defensive bombard, that wouldn't give the defending sieve, uh, that wouldn't give Greece a golden age. So I do the double move here, and I manage to take the city. So yeah, uh, that's Civ 3 multiplayer. Let me know if you have any questions, and thanks for watching.